Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here's my Android 15 beta 2 follow-up video. Today I will share with you even more features and my experience with the performance and battery for the past couple of days. So without further ado, let's jump in. The first change I'm going to show you is related to the screen casting. So let me mirror my phone's screen to my Chromecast with Google TV and choose the entire screen. Once I hit the start button, all my notifications will turn into hidden and I don't have the option to view the content. And my only way to do this is by tapping on the notification itself to open the app. But as far as you didn't do this, your notifications, same as the notification banners, will remain hidden. And this is very important because usually when you start screen mirroring, that's the perfect time to get the wrong notification in front of everyone. So thumbs up to Google for implementing such an amazing feature. You still can turn off this feature if you want to, but I'm not sure who will ever do that. But anyways, you can find it under that developer options. It's called disable screen share protections. You will see a toggle here. Once you turn it on, the feature will be deactivated. Now let me show you some stuff related to the private space that I didn't mention before. If you try to uninstall one of the apps from your private space, when you try to drag it over to the uninstall drop target, you will not be able to do so. But for you to uninstall an app, just tap and hold on it and you will find it in the app shortcuts menu. And if you have your private space unlocked and drag your finger over the scroll bar, you will see a new icon for the private space. And it will also go through the apps alphabetically, but it doesn't show the letter like the normal apps. And when you go to your settings and then battery and then battery usage, you will see the private space apps are showing in the list with the private space logo and it's a grayed out. This could be a way for others to know your hidden apps. So I think Google should remove them completely from here. And please let me know what do you think about this in the comments. And lastly, when you access some settings like languages and then on device recognition, the phone will first ask you if you want the personal or the private profile. And the same applies to the keyboard. When you go here and then the on-screen keyboard, you will see two tabs, one for the personal and one for the private. Now let me talk about some random tweaks here and there. And the first one is related to the volume slider. I already mentioned the haptic feedback you get when you drag your finger over it but you also get the same when you use the volume rockers and it feels really nice in hand. Another change related to the volume controls, if you have your phone set to do not disturb and then you go to the sound and vibration panel, when you change your ring profile from loud to vibration or the other way around, it will automatically turn off the do not disturb. But weirdly enough, if you have it on do not disturb and you do the same change from the slider, it doesn't do the same action. I also came across this new floating button that says tap to restart this app for a better view. And you'll notice here that I have a big black bar at the bottom. When I tapped on this button, the app restarted and the black bar disappeared. And it only happened with the YouTube Studio app. So maybe Google is working on something to force apps to run in full screen. So let's wait and see. And if you remember that feature I talked about in my previous video, when you tap and hold on any of the suggested apps, now you have the option to block it directly from the app shortcuts menu and instead of dragging it to the home screen like before. And I found the same applies to the suggested apps in your home screen dock and you will find it over here. Under the quick settings, we got a brand new tile called hearing devices, which will allow you to immediately pair your phone with hearing aid devices or switch between them. The biometric authentication card also got some visual tweaks. For reference, here is how it looks in beta one. Now we have the app icon at the top and the buttons are now framed in a sort of text only like before. And here is what happens when you use the face unlock. The confirm button got a fill color. Now let's talk about some new changes under settings. And here I have beta one on the right. You will see here that passwords, passkeys and the autofill menu is now called passwords, passkeys and accounts. And when you go inside, you will see that the gear button that takes you to the uh, autofill service is now called change. And tapping on the Google word is now replaced with a button called open. Under developer options, we got this new menu item called the grammatical gender, which will allow you to choose one of these options. When it comes to the predictive back gesture, it's now on by default and you don't need to activate anything under settings. And lastly, the system notifications got a new icon that represents the logo of Android 15. So that's it when it comes to the new features. Now let's talk about the bugs, performance and battery. 
And the first thing I want to talk about is this weird bug that making my wallpaper much dimmer than what it should be. And I don't have anything under settings to be the reason behind this. I don't use that dim wallpaper option under the bedtime. I don't even use the bedtime mode. I restarted the phone. I tried to set multiple native wallpapers and normal ones. But with no joy, the phone is stuck on this dim wallpaper for some reason. So I'm not sure if it's a hidden feature that I don't know about or this is just a bug that Google is going to fix in the future. When it comes to the performance, the phone gets warmer than expected in some occasions, but overall all the functions are working and I can use it as my daily driver normally. Moving to the battery, I took a couple of screenshots from my battery usage and here I have 6 hours and 31 minutes. When it comes to the battery remaining, it's only 8% which is also worse than the stable version that usually gets me seven hours a day with 10% uh, battery remaining. And when it comes to the usage, you'll see here that I used it on Wi-Fi for five hours, 39 minutes and on mobile data for two hours and 47 minutes. So it seems like Android 15 is not yet optimized for the best performance and you need to keep that in mind. So that's pretty much it for today. That was my follow up video about Android 15 beta 2. Please let me know in the comments if you spotted any other feature that I still didn't mention in my videos. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.